Well, hello, my name's Gary Mortensen. I'm a member of the Austin Friends of Traditional Music. In fact, I am the editor of the Real Times newsletter of the AFTM. And our activities have been significantly curtailed because of the pandemic, as you can imagine. So the spring edition of the newsletter has a wonderful article by our board member Chip Bach on some virtual activities that you can take up to help keep your music playing, keep things going. Wonderful article with all kinds of resources that he has uh, assembled. We've got an article about uh, another board member, Terry Sorrell, who hosts a weekly song circle, which is a great a lot of fun. And a good friend of the AFTM, Beth Crisman, Austin Fiddler, has put together a website called Cabin Fever Tunes, which has an ongoing calendar of performances by wonderful acoustic musicians that she knows. So do check out our newsletter. It's uh, available online at our website, which is aftm.us. Please do check that out. But the big news at AFTM is we have a new board member and uh, a new board member has assumed the role of vice president. We're all excited about that, but haven't got to hang around with him in person due to the isolation that we're all experiencing. So we're gonna to get to meet that gentleman uh, online right now. His credentials are impeccable, which is to say he's a banjo player. So, I mean, <laughs> you can't beat that. So I'm speaking about Mr. Lee Thomas. Lee, how's it going today? Fine, thank you, Gary. Great to talk to you. I was thinking back uh, on how we have met in the past, and I think it's pretty much always been at the uh, Austin String Band Festival every October. Is that probably true? That's probably true, but not quite. I think we met actually yeah. at Settlers one year. That could be, yeah. When it was in its uh, in the same place where... Uh, yes. Yeah. Indeed. Well, we, I know you haven't been in Austin for a great long time, but I'm wondering, like, whereabouts did you grow up uh, and learn about music in the first place? Well, um, I grew up in East Texas, in uh, the Piney Woods, on the edge of the East Texas oil field, mm -hmm. kind of in between uh, Tyler and Longview and Kilgore, kind of right in the middle of just south of Longview about 25 miles, and um, then uh, my dad was a, a school administrator in the school, and we actually lived on the campus, and I grew up there and, uh, until I left for college. Uh, were you playing any music at home, or was there any uh, musicians in your family growing up? Well, my uh, mother, much to my chagrin, <laughs> he takes six years of piano, which uh, I'm so grateful for today. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, but uh, really wasn't doing much with that until I started playing in a high school rock band ah. uh, there in East Texas and playing uh, keyboard. And uh, did that till Oh, I guess about uh, a year after I left for college. Uh-huh. And where, whereabouts did you matriculate, as they say? Well, went to Kilgore Junior College for a year, and then went to uh, Nacogdoches, Stephen F. Austin, for a year, and then got my uh, bachelor's degree at uh, North Texas in Denton. Mm-hmm. Then I went to uh, law school at SMU. Yeah. Well, I, I, law. I know a bunch of musicians from Denton. I know it's a very musical area, wonderful Indeed. school there. Uh, were you playing music uh, during your time at Denton? Uh, some of the time, yes. It was in Denton that I became interested uh, in playing the banjo. Ah. Uh, watched a PBS show on Earl Scruggs and mm -hmm. Smitten. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I had a, a Hammond a speaker, portable Hammond speaker that I used in the rock band and I traded it in for a banjo. <laughs> what a thoughtful decision on your part. <laughs> yeah. So your first uh, efforts in banjo were with the three finger style, the bluegrass style of picking? 
Indeed, I played uh, three finger style for probably about, uh, well, almost 30 years. Ah, that I didn't know, because I think I've only seen you with open back banjos. That's all you've seen me with. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, I've just about totally uh, quit the three finger style. Mm -hmm. Now and then I'll pick it up. I was mostly uh, in the style of Ralph Stanley, who I really enjoyed. Yeah. Playing and his style of playing. And uh, it was in Denton that. Uh, I started playing the banjo with the band and uh, there were a couple of friends of mine from East Texas who were in the band and, and then a neighbor down the street I heard him out on his porch sawing on a fiddle one day mm -hmm. and uh, introduced myself and asked him to hold it down a little bit and, <laughs> and he uh, we got together and kind of learned how to play together and we formed a band uh, there in Denton. Uh, I got married my senior year at Denton and uh, after we moved uh, to Dallas to SMU, uh, we played the group uh, by the name of Salt Lick played uh, about, uh, well, we played for 18 months in a bar on McKinney Street in Dallas. Wow. A week, made $75 a week ahead, and thought we were in hog heaven. So for 18 months, you had a weekly bluegrass gig. We played, yes. It was wow. bluegrass. We never actually decided whether we actually played bluegrass or not, but but uh, we we did a, we wrote a lot of our own tunes, and uh, um, played on and off for uh, twenty years. My goodness, are you still in touch with any of the boys oh, yeah. that were in the Salt Lake band? Yeah, they're all dear friends. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, the. We had quite a lineup. Uh, after uh, I left Dallas, I went to Fort Worth to practice law, where I practiced law for 45 years. Wow. Well, I retired. Uh, uh, I intended to retire in uh, 2018. But I finally tried my last trial in Fort Worth at, in federal court in February of this year. So now I'm retired, except we just got a notice of appeal on the case that we won in the trial. So now I've got oh. an appeal. And so I'm almost retired. Yeah. Retirement isn't necessarily the easiest thing to pull off, I guess, in, in your case. No. Well, I, I, uh, you were in Fort Worth, as you said, for your, for your legal career, but now you're in the Austin area. How did that come about? Well, um, Janina and I, my wife, uh, decided that uh, we would move to Austin because number one, we like the town, and but uh, more importantly, two of our children and their families live here, huh. and we live uh, in between them. I have three children; two of them are here in Austin, and one of them is in Mansfield, and. Uh, so we came to Austin and are glad we did. Uh huh. Are there any uh, any grandchildren in the area? Oh yes. Uh huh. We got four grandchildren. Uh huh. Uh, did they any come of your to see us quite often? Oh, that's great. I'm quite jealous of that because uh, I I have a grandchild several thousand miles away, unfortunately. So, what you gonna do? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, did any of your kids uh, pick up music after they heard you playing around the house? Uh, my youngest son is a fiddle player. Ah. He uh, took lessons with, with uh, Valerie uh, Riles, is her name now. And she's a, a well-known Texas fiddler. 
and teaches a lot of kids. And he, he took lessons from her and, and uh, plays quite well. Mm -hmm. Is he playing in the old time or bluegrass style of, of music? Uh, he, yes, he, he can play, uh, he can play the old, old time style. Not, uh -huh. it has, hasn't ever tried his hand, I don't think, really at bluegrass. Yeah. He so, played, uh, we had a, the old time band in Fort Worth with the fiddle player that I played with in uh, Salt Lake and the mandolin player. And, um, and he played with us in that band. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And, it's an awful lot of fun getting to play with one of your kids, I have found, and I bet you do as well. I enjoy it very uh, much. Yeah. But as he yeah. said, you have switched now to um, open back banjos, and was that a gradual kind of change from bluegrass, or did, how did that come about? You know, it, it really wasn't. Uh, the, uh, after Salt Lake, uh, stopped playing or almost stopped playing. Um, you know, it's not really a lot of fun for me to sit around and play three finger Stanley style banjo by myself. Mm. So uh, I uh, was, I, I think I saw some, another TV show uh, with, with some claw hammer in it. And I said, mm -hmm. that. so I did. And, uh, Got to know Chuck Lee very well, who's a well-known open back banjo maker. Acquired uh, several of his banjos and uh, have been doing claw hammer almost exclusively. Yeah. Then. How, and, how many years has that been since you switched over now? I'm say it's going to be about 20 years when uh -huh. I started. Playing claw hammer. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know of Chuck Lee, and I'm fortunate enough to own one of his fine instruments. And uh, you're a personal friend of his, though, I guess, at this point, huh? Yes, he and I are pretty good friends. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Hope to meet him someday myself. Are you playing with uh, a band uh, here in the Austin area? Uh, well, not during the pandemic, of course, but. Uh, no, in, in no. Time. I play, Janita, my wife, plays guitar. Yeah. And bass. And uh, she actually was in a band also, an all girls band called the Dixie Dewdrops in Dallas and Fort Worth. That's a fine name for a band. And they had a, they had a uh, couple of sisters who filled in for them as they, they had quite a few jobs in Dallas, Fort Worth, and Rod Kennedy liked them a whole lot and had them down at Kerrville quite a bit. Huh. And uh, those two girls ended up in the Dixie Chicks. Really? I got the name. Uh-huh. <laughs> they just substituted chicks for dewdrops and uh, yes. went, took it from there. Well, that's pretty cool, because I certainly seen Janita and you playing together. Were you playing together as uh, early as your days back in Denton? Uh, no, no. Uh, but uh, she played in the band, in the old time band we had in, in, in uh, Fort Worth and Dallas. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. played, we did that for about uh, eh, 15 years. Uh huh. Well, as I said, the, the whole board of the AFTM is really pleased that you have decided to join us in our endeavor. And normally we have a lot of things going on, but of course, under the current circumstances, not so much. Um, but you have been, I think, several times to the String Band Festival in October, which is a big favorite of mine. And I, how do you feel about that festival? Well, that's, that's what got me interested in uh, AFTM. Uh, Janine and I started coming to that festival and, and I know 2008, it may have been 2007. Mm. And, uh, and we also went to, to uh, Old Settlers, but uh, I really loved the, the string festival, string band festival, and uh, have been interested in 
in this organization ever since. Yeah. And just to really honored uh, to be on the board and hope I can, hope I can contribute something. Oh, I know you will. And speaking of our festival, I think we're all very proud of the festival. It's not a great big festival. Uh, could use more attendance and still be very comfortable. It's at a beautiful time of year and a really beautiful setting down by uh, Onion Creek. So if you haven't been to the Austin String Band Festival in October, I hope you would consider it. And I hope we have one this year. It's totally up in the air what will be happening in October. But if you stay tuned to our website, we'll certainly post our viewers on what's going on. We'd love to do something at the time of the festival, though it's, it's hard to say what that might be. But I agree with you, Lee, that, that festival is, is a real joy. Uh, jamming goes on constantly and all the favorite flavors of traditional music. And we have wonderful acts on stage as well. So a big favorite of mine, when I lived in Iowa, I was driving back here to attend it for the, the few years I was up there. Well, I don't know when I'll see you again in person, Lee. But it's been great talking to you here. And uh, our board meetings, of course, occur virtually now, as, as they must. But sooner or later, we'll all be getting together again. And Can't wait. Yeah. So on behalf of the board, really glad to have you. And for everybody who's been watching this, appreciate, appreciate, appreciate your tuning in. And stay tuned to that AFTM.us website. And we'll keep you updated on what we're up to. So to everyone out there, thanks for watching.